Hockey, hockey, and more hockey. Did you expect anything else? We bring in our pal Wes Walls to break down, preview, and bring chaotic takes to the 2021-22 Minnesota Wild season. Plus, Wayne Gretzky going bar down on Charles Barkley, things you love to see on NHL and TNT, and some things we don't love to see with the new broadcast as well. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Jim Beam, Better Edge, and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is season three, episode episode 95. Be sure to join the Marcus Foligno fan club by purchasing your official tea at sodastick.com. A portion of all proceeds will go toward the Janus Foligno Foundation. And don't forget to snag 15% off all purchases with code BARDOWNBEAUTIES at sodastick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company in corporate Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. We're back. I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Alexis Pearson. Fred Vineford is fired again, which fired. is why I said his last name because he's <laughs> fired. Uh, you know, it's just a repetitive thing at this yeah, point. Yeah, so. it's a good bit. It's a good bit. We enjoy the bit. <laughs> if you don't enjoy the bit, we apologize, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So we're back. Hockey is back. You guys are listening to this on Monday. Two games, probably Minnesota Wild are 2-0 and oh at this point. Uh-huh. We're just going to put that out there. Yeah. T, right? Like, <laughs> and even you still have to explain T to me at some point in time. I it think. means like, yes, like, obviously, like, duh. Like, if you're it's like, no shorter than saying yes. Right. But it's like more hip. It's like T, T. I'm hip. I'm wearing jogger jeans. You can say T for anything. Right now, if Alexis. T. Yeah. That's cool, <laughs> you right? You can Those say cool. T for anything. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not like the Kermit the Frog T. No, no, that's different. It's kind of a spinoff of that. Spill the, you know, tea? Like, spill the tea is kind of like, oh, give me the deets. Give me the tea. And like, if you say tea about something, listen, I got my friends on this and they think it. they're like, you overuse this. But I'm like, you can say it for anything. Like, really, if you try hard enough, mm-hmm. like say something. Um, Say something hockey. controversial. Uh, Victor Ask is a number one center. Tea. Uh-huh. That's a bad kind of tea. <laughs> <laughs> classic so in case you didn't know we're a hockey podcast (laughs) also a very hip hockey podcast Fred is like gosh this is off the rails we're only (laughs) a couple minutes in um joining us later Wes Walls will break down the Minnesota Wild season with us super honored to have Walsey a part of that so we're going to save all of the wild talk for then so be sure to stick around for segment two see how we did that loop you in hook line sinker Mm -hmm. um but we do want to talk a little bit more about hockey now that we've seen a couple games Alexis TNT ESPN I know fans, I know you guys are pissed that you can't watch the game as often. I apologize. I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have anything to do with that. Alexis has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. Or do it I? It is what it is. Or does <laughs> T T T Yay! Yay! <laughs> People have now turned this podcast off. Um, no, I personally, I thought ESPN, it was different, right? They brought back mm-hmm. some nostalgia and I didn't watch a whole lot of NHL hockey when it was on ESPN. I'm sure you weren't right. even born at that point in time. <laughs> but was anyway, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I didn't love the camera angles. I know they were trying something new as far as having them lower. To me, it just, I think you're so used to seeing it, how you've seen it for the right. past, you know, right. whatever, many years. Um, but TNT, can we talk about Wayne Gretzky going far <laughs> down ski on Charles Barkley, who was wearing his goalie pads on the wrong, on the wrong legs, legs. Connor Beaupre and Judd Hull, <laughs> Hull excuse me, are probably like, ah, just dying inside when they saw that. But, um, I thought the TNT pregame was absolutely epic. Like that's what you need more of. And TNT for so long has done such a great job with NBA on TNT, right? But I'm not at all surprised that they're carrying that same energy and fun into it. Mm-hmm. I personally loved it. Alexis, what did you think? Yeah. First of all, apologies if I mix up what TNT and ESPN did, because it already feels like all of a blur watching yes. all of this hockey, um, over the course of the last couple of days. Um, first of all, I loved, uh, watching Linda Cohen on ESPN oh, uh, for the pre and post of the yes. Seattle game. Uh, hearing our petition her voice, worked. Yes. Hearing mm-hmm. her voice in my living room, seeing her face on TV, the excitement and energy she brings, uh, to sports coverage was an absolute blast. That was one of the first things I loved about the new hockey season. The TNT broadcast though, was just tremendous. Um, and 
And I think no offense or any shade at all to, you know, NHL and NBC and, and NBCSN and what they did there. Um, but I just felt like TNT took a new spin to it and made it more fun and made it more interactive. And it was more of like, it felt like you were watching a TV show rather than like a pregame show. Does that make sense? Like it was like yes. entertaining. I was like, I want to watch more of this. And it was almost as exciting as the game itself in a way. Um, and I just, I thought they did a great job putting it together. The people that they had on, um, you know, the broadcast throughout the game and whatnot was, was great. Um, the Charles Barkley Wayne Gretzky bit was tremendous. I mean, they just, from start to finish, it was just a lot of fun to watch. It was entertaining. And uh, like you said, they've done a great job with other sports uh, with similar formatting in the past. So no surprise that they knocked it out of the park um, with hockey here. Um, but if that's the kind of stuff we're going to be getting on broadcast moving forward, I really think you're opening the door to so many more kinds of people wanting to tune in and watch that. Um, I mean, even I, like, I don't watch a ton of like sports center, but I, after the game, ended on like ESPN after I stuck around and watched sports center. They were talking about baseball, but I'm like, you know what? I'm already on here. I'm tuned in. It was a great <laughs> broadcast. I'm going to keep watching. Um, yeah. and so I just thought they did a lot of fun stuff and, and knowing how cool that was, I'm excited to see what other kind of bits and segments and stuff they do throughout the remainder of the season. Um, hopefully keeping people entertained and keeping things fun for hockey fans. I mean, and that's what hockey so desperately needs. Like yes. I completely understand tradition and hockey has been so resistant to change, but as I have said time and time again, because I say it to my mother time and time again, like you can't complain that nobody's paying attention to hockey. Mm -hmm. If you don't make it fun for people to pay attention to hockey, and then you can't go and complain that, oh, they're changing it or they're trying to expand it and they're trying to grow it. Like, well, yeah, like that's how it works. Like you have to be willing to change and adapt to the new culture. I mean, Alexis, I know you saw that Austin Matthews ESPN magazine cover. Oh. See, that's too hip for me. <laughs> Since we're on the theme of hip, it's just too hip for me. The tie dye he, shirt with the bucket hat. Can we talk about the drip on the fit? You realize drip, drip, that that is drip. just <laughs> 90s apparel. Like all of this is stuff that we used to wear as little children in the Whatever. 90s. I like stirrup it. It leggings fire. came back. Like, what is this? It's it bizarre. It looked terrible then it looks a little better now hater. but you're yeah being a hater, i mean not tea. <laughs> right you're never you usually aren't going to see that you're going to see a hockey player dressed in hockey gear so people know right. it's a hockey player but you're trying to make these players more recognizable you're trying to put them in front and that's why the, yes and that's why the espn tnt deal was so awesome so yes i understand you guys are upset that you're losing coverage i would recommend getting the espn hulu disney plus package if you have yeah. kids it's a pretty heck of a deal you can watch lion king in your free time as well so Ex it's a win-win <laughs> exactly i mean i'm more of a little mermaid girl but that's neither here Fair. nor there <laughs> um but yeah no i love what tnt is doing i i like what espn is doing i'm excited to see them kind of get back mm -hmm. into their groove i think i saw a quote that Gary Bettman joked, well, if ESPN does half a good of a job covering us as they did freezing us out for all those years, oh my then God. we'll be good. Tea, I was like, Gary, what? Tea. Oh, yes. I, and I don't know. I, I suppose I never verified that much like my Twitter account. It is not verified, <laughs> but it will be um, still looking for that Twitter. I'm almost 7,000 <laughs> fans. So please, please help me. Um, yeah, no. So I do. I like it. You know, Another really cool kind of hip thing is betteredge.com. You can get a free $10 with code Buttes, B E A U T S, uh, at Better Edge. We are going to be starting up the Beat the Butte, which is a really fun competition head to head. I love to win. I think we're going to try to get Alexis in as well on the beat. The I was going to say fun is a relative term. Depends on if you're Jesse or playing against Jesse. Yes, how fun I, it will be. <laughs> exactly. Like if I lose, I'm it's not good. It's not happy. <laughs> I'm pissed. And let's let just, I just Barnum have to Beauty's win. Gets canceled. Everything goes downhill. It's, <laughs> it's just <yeah>. all <laughs> off the rails. So be sure to check out that again in snake a free $10. And you can listen to Barnum Beauties right on the app. They've made a lot of really cool changes. I love it. I love the guys that run it. They've got a sick office too, which is just even more cherry on mm -hmm. top. Can't complain. So be sure to check out better edge, uh, before we get to more Minnesota wild talk in all of our Minnesota wild talk, rather in segment two, any early surprises? I mean, should we talk about Buffalo winning a game? <laughs> like I know they weren't obviously going to go. Oh, and 82, but you saw those lines released and you're just like, oh, like throw <laughs> up in my like mouth. Made up names. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I mean, I love people? me some Casey Middlestead. Don't get me wrong. And, and Jeff Skinner's Jeff Skinner, but I just, yeah. Oh, like I, what is happening? And like Buffalo, what are they going to do this year? Are they going to be good? Are they going to shock no. the world? No, no. I <laughs> listen. It, okay. Yesterday we're recording this on a Friday. So we haven't seen a wild game yet, but we have seen a handful of games from other teams, um, from the last two days. And I tweeted this the other night, but I said, the start to the NHL season vibes has just been absolute chaos. Like 
a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. We had like the Sabres winning. Um, we had, um, was it who else won? Um, did Arizona lost, which is, which is to be expected. Tampa um, came the, back and won it over Tampa came back, Florida's yep. dominating by Islanders yep. lost to the Canes. Yeah. It's been a weird couple of days start to the season, but I love it. That's what I love about hockey is that like literally chaos happens and it's like kind of unexpected, but also expected. It's like, this is why we watch hockey because everything is different every single night. Like anybody can win even the Sabres, which they did maybe not Arizona, but the Sabres can. Um, and I also tweeted this. I said, I love that the Sabres winning literally one game has everyone questioning like their understanding of hockey. They're like, do I actually know the sport well enough to like, I didn't predict this. Like, am I smart or no? Like that's, that's what makes the sport so fun. I love just seeing conversation for, um, you know, hockey back on my timeline, talking about games, talking about players, making, making jokes, all this fun stuff. And so, yeah, there's been a lot of unexpected stuff that's happened in the first couple games, but it's also a new season back to a normal formatting. So people are, you know, players and teams are going to be getting into the groove of things here for the first uh, handful of games, uh, as, as teams get settled into a new season. And, uh, I've, I've absolutely loved it. Has anything uh, really stood out to you in the first few days, Jesse? Um, Gabriel Landeskog, is he a goon? Like a hundred percent. Right? Like, I guess I've never, I mean, he's a talented goon, but it's just like, his hits are like, ick. Like, I don't like it at all. You know? So no, I mean, nothing really it's, it's early. So I like to just like take a breath, just watch the game, have fun. Right. (laughs) Like again, it's an 82 game grind. So nothing too crazy. I mean, I think it's, it's been fun to see Seattle, Ryan Donato. How about yeah. that? Getting the first goal in franchise history. Um, Total shocker, right? That a former yes. wild player scores the first goal in his Carson Susie's bench, Scratched, you know, yeah. whatever, <laughs> no big deal. Um, no, I mean, it's been, it's just been fun to watch. And it is, I've, I've been really intrigued at how ESPN and TNT are, are handling it. I'm, I'm excited again, not to rub it in the face of people that I get to watch the games, but yeah. um, no, I, I for us. it's yeah. I'm excited. Um, to quick see question. I have yes. to know your opinion. Did Chandler Stevenson kick that puck in? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. I mean, thank you. You know what I here, here's the deal similar to like the Mike Zimmer, Kirk cousins, right? It's all about angles. So depending yeah. on the angle that you look at that hug or fight, fight. It, you know, it looks like one way or another. <laughs> Same with the kick, right? Like I think from the first angle, it, it looks like maybe it tapped in off his skate right sure. on the outside, but then the you look at the angle, angle where he's right yep. there and he clearly moves his foot and kicks it in. Like he knew exactly what he was doing, right? Like, so, it's not like he was getting better positioning. Like right, he knew right. exactly. He directed it to the bug, everything that a kicked goal would be, he covered it, but I mean, so, you know, what's funny is I, I was watching that game. I got to catch the end of that game after work. So I had the game on, I was doing work. I'm sitting on my, my couch watching it and that goal happens. And I didn't register. I didn't notice right away that he had, that there was going to be some controversy there. And then, you know, the broadcaster was like, oh, they're going to take another look at this for a kicking. So I'm paying attention. And before the broadcasters can even react to it out loud, I literally said, oh, that's a hundred percent a kick. And mm-hmm. the broadcasters were like, no, that's a deflection. They're going on and on. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, let's see what the officials say. And then the officials look at it and they determine it's a deflection. I literally was like questioning my sanity. I was like, do I actually not understand this rule? I was so confident that it was a kick Yeah. that everyone on TV and the officials saying that it was a deflection and being like confident in that answer. I was yeah. like, maybe I'm just crazy. Like, I don't know. And then I went on Twitter before I went to bed and I saw everybody was like, okay, this was a terrible, I'm like, this oh, is like, I can go to bed happy now yeah, because I'm not cancel totally my wrong. therapy session. Yeah. And I'm not crazy. Yeah. So I was curious what your take on that was. Cause it was, yeah. See this again, chaos. seeing chaos that, seeing the, the other thing. angle, right? Like, but I would agree at first it looked like it could have just deflected off the shape, sure. right? Like it was like, ah, but it, that's angles matter, baby. That's hockey, baby. I mean, that's, that's all about, you gotta get the angles. I could tell you how to take a great selfie where you look 10 pounds thinner uh-huh. because angles, angles follow me for more advice on how to be hit <laughs> more Instagram, tips. <laughs> more Instagram tips. That's also what this podcast is about. We should probably cut it now. Um, yeah. no, be sure to also stick around, check out cues with the buttes. We answer mm-hmm. a lot, a ton of Minnesota wild questions as well. Um, which will also cover some in segment two. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with West walls. It's hockey season, baby. And the best way to head into a new season is to be fully equipped with all the merch you need to cheer on your favorite teams. Oh, and some Bard on Beauties merch too, right? Right. We've got you covered. Literally head over to teespring.com where you can find all kinds of custom design, Bard on Beauties apparel, plus so much more. We're back. Joining us now, the man, 
the myth, the legend, <laughs> Mr. Wes Walls. Wes, how are you? Girls, so great to be with you. Hope you're all doing great and getting excited for uh, this upcoming season. It's uh, We're going to be back with some normal season. Fans <laughs> are going to be in the building watching the games. It's uh, Our world needs this. And uh, I, I've never been so excited for a hockey season to start, not only selfishly for myself, but uh, even for our, just for our fans. Oh, my gosh. I know, right? Like being back at camp and having <laughs> public practices and just no. it felt so good. I think you forget how much you do miss it. And I know people like I'm so freaking excited. Usually I kind of go into the season like, all right, here we go. But this year <laughs> there is there's just this level of excitement. And just to have those fans in the building to see Kirill Kaprizov finally is is just so going to be so rewarding. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you guys are out in the public, too. And, <laughs> and your podcast is so popular that you can't wobbly walk anywhere without anyone recognizing you girls. Yeah, and, God, you know how it is, Wes. <laughs> I know, yeah. just constantly. <laughs> but but you girls get the question, too, about yeah. Kirill Kaprizov, like, all summer. Like, you get tired of talking about them. And, yeah. and the fact that, um, obviously, we got Kirill signed. It was, it was, you know, Billy Guerin's been in some battles in his life on the ice and off. I mean, that was that was a fight. That was a struggle. That was a battle. And I know Billy probably downplays a lot about how it kind of wore him out. Mm -hmm. Um, just as a general manager, you can't get too high and too low, just like a player, but I can, I can promise you there was, there were probably some days that he wanted to strangle somebody (laughs) because he thought he was being more and more than fair. And uh, the fact that they got it done, um, is so, so exciting for our, for our fan base. I mean, you know, I, I, uh, on the air last year, there were so many times girls that I, that I, uh, you know, he'd only played 50 games, 55 games or whatever. And some of the things that he was doing in the offensive zone reminded me so much of Sidney Crosby, the way mm. his, the way he would mm-hmm. skate with his, with his, like his feet open, yep. <laughs> Mohawk move and come up with pucks and how dangerous he was in the offensive zone. I, I, I had to stop myself from, from comparing him to Sidney Crosby, <laughs> but I got a feeling that comparison might come out this year at some point during one of the broadcasts or some of the broadcasts. He's that dynamic and he's in a wild uniform. Yeah. And I was, I don't think fans are going to complain about having that comparison in a wild uniform, <laughs> yeah. right? Like Penguins fans players. might, well, uh, they might get up yes, in a, in a about it. <laughs> well, you know what it's like girls too. You, you throw out a comparison like that when the kids played 50 games and I, and I'm not one of those guys that likes to uh, overanalyze things, even though I am an analyst, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't love to overanalyze things. I don't, I was really nervous calling him city. Cry. I, and I, like I said, I stayed away from it, but he's going to, if he continues to do what he's, what he does, Kirill Kaprizov does, he's going to get that comparison this year. He is that dynamic in the offensive zone and able to create a lot just out of his own sheer determination and his, uh, the tools that he has in the toolbox. There's, there's just not many players in the world that can do what he can do. Right. I think the most exciting thing selfishly when he got signed, what people were like, how relieved are you that he signed? I'm like, I'm relieved. No one's going to ask me about this anymore, about what I know. <laughs> Is he signed yet? What have you heard? I'm like, I just finally, that's, that was like every single time I went up to somebody, they're like, Hey, so Kirill Kaprizov. I'm like, I'm good. Thanks for asking. And yes, yeah. Kirill Kaprizov. Um, <laughs> but no, then you take a step back and you think this really is, you know, a big moment in wild history and hopefully a turning point in wild history. And I know Jesse and I have dabbled with the idea of, is there a possibility of a sophomore slump is Kirill Kaprizov going to be able to get back to and exceed what he did last year he's going to have a new uh, uh center you know between him and Zuccarello Wes uh what do you predict for a season for Kirill Kaprizov is Jules Erickson not going to be a better fit there and can Kirill Kaprizov be the MVP that we all hope he's going to be and if he scores less than 40 points is it a bust <laughs> yeah it, it is it, it, it will be a bust uh, yeah. when you're making nine million listen mm-hmm. you're making nine million dollars now that's that's a different ball game so um, now you've moved into the top, you know, 20, 30, uh, guys getting paid in the league. That's just the world you live in. So there's going to be pressure on you to score. And when, uh, and, and when the team does struggle to score and you're not, and, uh, and he's not scoring and the team's not winning, that's just part of the part of the business. But, um, I just think he's, he's one of those type of players, girls, and you see, saw him play last year. Like he, he plays so hard every game that I just don't see him going into a, into a situation where he doesn't score in like 10 games or things like that. Like one's going to go off his shin pad one, Mm -hmm. just because he's got the puck so much Mm -hmm. he's going to, he's he he has the ability. Usually, you know, you'll see defensemen uh, around the NHL guys that play 30 minutes, you know, able to control the game from the back end. This is a guy that really can control the game from the front end. And 
when he's on the ice, the, the ice just tilts. It just does. He's so strong on pucks, comes up with loose pucks. And uh, I just don't see him having any problem scoring. There is going to be no question about it. He will be the focal point going into every game for the opposition. Like he will have a star beside his name in every visitor's locker room. Keys to beating the Minnesota Wild, keeping 97 off the score sheet. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's nothing, you know, that's nothing new to Kirill Kaprizov. I mean, he had that all when he was playing the KHL for five years. And, you know, maybe caught people off guard the first 15, 20 games of the season Mm -hmm. last year. But he still played 30 games of the season where he was playing against Brent Burns and Dowdy and and, and all the the Norris Trophy winners. And he was still able to put up numbers and score. So um, I don't think he'll have any problem, you know, getting to 35, 40 goals and and be able to get at least a point a game, especially, especially playing with Zuccarello. And, uh, you know, obviously you mentioned Erickson Eck being on that line. I just, I I think, I think with having speed through the middle of the ice with those two skill guys. So just envision this girls through the neutral zone. Those three guys are coming through the neutral zone. This is no slight against Victor Rask Mm -hmm. because I actually like Victor Rask (laughs) a lot more than most people in this market. You know why I like him? Because he's a very smart hockey player. Mm -hmm. I love Mm -hmm. real hockey players, but he doesn't play with the pace that Eric Sinek does. Mm -hmm. So just envision this coming through the neutral zone with Eck uh Zuccarello and and uh 97 Erickson Eck kicks the puck out wide now Erickson Eck drives the middle of the ice and he's got so much speed that he the defenders have to go with him because he's yeah, got so much speed. Right. this isn't Victor Rask okay that is going to create so much ice at the top of the zone when they enter the zone we know Zuccarello likes to play as offside right mm-hmm. but we are going to see Mr. Zuccarello cut to the middle at the blue line a lot more and if he gets to the middle of the ice Zuccarello and cuts to the middle and gets that ice you know, that now all of a sudden his vision comes into play. You're usually going to need a save off of the rush. So that's one thing that I'm really excited for. Um, Zuccarello getting it. Uh, one of the things that that's flew under the radar last year is, is Matt Zuccarello had uh, averaged 0.83 points a game last year, which was highest <laughs> of, of his career. You think mm-hmm. he's not excited to have that <laughs> guy back in the mix? Uh, yeah. Kaprizov. off. So when I'm watching them at practice girls and we get a chance to watch them. Mm-hmm practice all the time those two are really really dynamic and i'm just excited to see what this line could do yeah i am absolutely excited and i like jewel erickson Eck there he absolutely deserves that type of promotion i am curious to see if they do eventually go back to felino greenway and Eck because that line was so successful and because that line was kind of a good shutdown line um but you know we can dive more into that in a little bit i do want to go back to Kirill for a second because we had talked about you know it is it's such kind of a small sample size right 55 games you still saw tremendous play but obviously the critics came out during the playoffs and said hey you know this this guy kind of got shut down he didn't know how to do that I mean how important is it for superstars to not to to play beyond that right like Connor McDavid's not a guy that's getting shut out too often <laughs> he figures out a way and I think Kirill Kaprizov is very capable of that um, but how important is it especially now this year when he's going to be going up against the entire league it's not just your LA's and your Anaheim's and your Arizona's and, and teams like that. He's going to be facing much, much different teams. How do you think Kirill will handle that uh, in year two here now that he has the 55 games under his belt? I don't think anything's going to change. I, I just don't. I know it's been reported. Some of the people talking about, you know, the division that we played in last year, uh, we got all those California teams. I mean, listen, we didn't play Buffalo or, or some of those other teams. We get a chance to play this, this year. Hey, too, Buffalo so. won, you know, yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're off to a hot start. Had them at the top of the, uh, <laughs> like them at the top of their division after a game, yeah, they looked awesome <laughs> in the first game, but, um, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I just, uh, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't envision it. You know, I, I think Kirill, I mean, he scored a goal in the, in the, uh, that series or he might've had two goals. I think he still had four or five points. It wasn't like, I know you, I didn't think Kirill Kaprizov was great the first couple games against Vegas, but I thought as the, as the playoffs wore on, I thought he became much more, much more dangerous to, and, and listen, he's, this is all new to him too. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's uh, even though he was a star in the KHL and, and, and now he's getting paid, like he's a star, this is still uncharted territory for him to, to right. now that everyone in the league is looking at him as, you know, as a, as a superstar. And when the promos come on for, for Bally's, for mm-hmm. Bally's and ESPN, you're going to see Kirill Kaprizov's uh, jersey on there. So he's going to see a lot more of himself and he's mm-hmm. going to understand exactly what's going on. How he handles that's going to be um, very interesting. But I just, 
if he was the type of player girls that I saw that was kind of cherry picking out in the neutral zone and letting his teammates do all the work. And uh, I just know how that, I mean, you can go a month without scoring. If you play like that, you can get mm-hmm. hot yeah. for 10 goals in eight games, but I just think the way he plays girls, I just don't see, I mean, the way he plays is just, sees a slump. This is a slump buster. You just, he, I don't see him having any problems being able to create and put up numbers. And uh, I think the power play is going to be much better this year yes. um, because the power play, because the season's not quite as condensed as, as it was yeah. last year. I would, it wouldn't surprise me girls to see the top unit start to play a lot more minutes on the power mm-hmm. play. Like I'm talking 30, like a minute, 30 mm-hmm. minute, 15 mm-hmm. minute, 20 last year was, it was pretty much, if there was a face off after a minute, <laughs> the top unit was out there, they're coming off. I think this year, because the schedule is not quite as condensed, and we have a lot of balance in our forward lines with our fourth line playing, you know, 10, 11 minutes. I mm-hmm. think Dean's going to give them an opportunity after a minute to win the face off and then stay out there for another 30 seconds. So mm-hmm. I, I do think that that power play is going to, going to, uh, is going to perform a little better than it did last year. So no, zero and 18 or yeah, or I was going to say, you. I really can't get worse <laughs> West, but I, yeah. the optimism is nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we might see some zero and 18, zero for 18s during the year, but yeah, I, I have a feeling that we're going to be much better than uh, where did we finish? I think we finished 24th last year. So and mm-hmm. actually the last half of the season was, yeah. was, was pretty darn good, but uh, they just, you couldn't overcome the, the whole idea they had buried, but I think so again, getting to the 24th spot was, was actually pretty good. You know, I want to ask you about the other end of the ice West and that's goaltending. You had the pleasure of playing with probably the best goalie duo the wild have have maybe ever had back in uh, your day. And people are very excited about the cam Talbot and possibility of Kakinen being a very talented uh, hockey player in this league and what that duo could bring us. Um, They are on very opposite ends of uh, their career, right? You know, Kakinen's the rookie cam Talbot's getting up there uh, in age and towards the end of his career. But last year, it seemed like they had whatever was working was working. Um, heading into this season, do you have concerns at all with the wild uh, goaltending tandem? And can we rely on Kakinen to step in when we need him to? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> We've talked about <laughs> this like, quite a bit. Um, have you really? Because yes. I mean, it's, it's an interesting talker and it I is. do, it's an interesting talker. And I, I do think it's, uh, it's worthy of, of conversation because, uh, you know, of all the situations that the wilder look at, looking at and listen, every team around the national hockey league has holes in their, in their game. Right. Um, and the Wild are no different, you know, new defensemen coming in. How is that going to play out? Uh, but I do think the goaltending situation is is going to be interesting. And one, I think, and I don't know this for sure, but one that Billy Aaron is going to be watching very closely. Um, we all saw what Cam Talbot did last year. Mm-hmm. Can he duplicate what he did last year? I mean, a 915 save percentage. We hadn't we haven't seen that in Minnesota here for three or four years. And it was a it was it was the biggest reason why the Wild had their greatest season point wise point percentage wise in their history. I mean, I know everyone talks about, about real Kaprizov and deservedly. So Cam Talbot was our MVP last year, in my mm-hmm. opinion, he just brought so much stability um, to the lineup. Um, 915 save percentage that he got last year was basically matched his career save percentage. And coming into the season, uh, I remember doing the preview show the year before thinking he didn't have to be a hero. Just, if you come yeah. in and do 915, bud, like yeah. you, <laughs> you don't have to, you know, that's all you need to do for this team to, to really have a great season. And um, he did that. He's a year older, right? Yeah. He's a year older. And so um, father time is almost undefeated. <laughs> Brady's around. And, uh, <laughs> guys, so we can't say, uh, we can't say he's, he's defeated or undefeated because Tom Brady is around, but he takes amazing care of himself this camp. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no reason to think that he can't duplicate the season he had last year. The capital cap and Kakinen situation is, is up for debate. Mm-hmm. What kind of goalie do we have? We still, in my opinion, are, are watching him. Like yeah. he's, it almost feel like he's still a rookie. We're, we're trying to figure out who he is. And, he's actually you know, considered technically still a rookie. Is he really? I didn't know yeah. That. He still qualifies for rookie status this year. So is he going to win the Calder is the next question. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> listen, I'm telling you, like he has the talent to uh, like, you watch him in practice. He has the ability and the talent to, to be an outstanding goaltender. But, um, I mean, last season was, it was, it was like a tale of two seasons. The first half of the year when Cam got hurt, um, got injured there a little bit and he got a chance to take the ball, man. He was unbelievable. He was just so solid and made everything look so easy. And then I don't know what happened the last half of the season. I think his save percentage, the last 
12, 14 starts. Yeah, it was like wasn't 80, good. 87% or something like that. That's just not going to get it done. But like for, for us, the people that analyze the game for a living, like that's stuck in my head, the last 14 games, not the yeah. first 14. Right? <laughs> so I think, I think things would be completely different. I think this conversation right now, girls would have a different tone if he would have struggled at the beginning and played great down the stretch. Right. You know? Right. So he's just got to figure out, um, you know, where he's at, uh, and, uh, with his game. And I, I know, um, and during our preview show hit, we, we had some sound during our preview show and he talked about, uh, um, some of the small little details that he worked on his games. He didn't really talk about, uh, get too um, direct about some of the things he worked on, but they were two little subtle things that he worked that he saw in his game that he needed to, to work on. And one of them, I think just if you put by putting two and two together was, was really just slowing his mind down. I think his, he's, he's, his mind is moving faster than even what's happening on the mm-hmm. ice. So I think he's trying to slow down his mind just a little bit. Um, and I think that's an important part of it, but um, Billy Garen's going to be watching very closely. Uh, Cam Talbot's 34 years old. We cannot, you know, Cam can't play 65 games this year. Yeah. Um, so interesting to see. Uh, everyone's going to be watching to see how uh, Capo Kakinen plays. And uh, what's really interesting is, uh, you know, obviously we, we play Friday night and then we play Saturday night mm-hmm. in LA. If Capo gets his first game, uh, yeah. the second game of the season, um, we'll see how it plays out. I would, I, I would, think that if we won, maybe they, I don't, I don't know. Who knows how? <laughs> well, it's funny because Jesse and I both have some concerns with goaltending, but we're on yeah. opposite side of what we're concerned about. Jesse's a little more concerned about Talbot and his age. I'm a little bit more concerned about Kakinen and wondering, you know, if he's as good as what he showed early on in the season or not. So it's funny because that's, we, we both have concerns, but for, mm-hmm. for very different reasons. And it's yeah. probably my biggest concern with the team. I mean, if I'm being honest, I had concerns about uh, the blue line and how defensively they were going to kind of come together. But I think your top two pairs are are great. I think your third pair, man, I do like Kukulov. I think he's fit in really, really well. Jordy Ben and John Merrill, I haven't seen much that's impressed yeah. me, but I mean, ultimately I'm okay with the way the defense is is going, but I think goaltending, I'm just, I'm not confident in, and, and for both reasons too. I mean, Cam to me, it's like, can he, like you had said, Wes, can he replicate what he did last year? I don't know. I'm not sure that he could, cause he impressed me. I mean, he raised yeah. the bar for me. I was really, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'll admit I was not too confident at the beginning of the season with him and he certainly exceeded expectations with cap capo West. Do you think that bill is really going to be watching, especially with drafting Jesper Wellstead and who's easily one of the best goaltenders coming out of North America. Do you think that's going to be a big thing in the back of Garen's mind this year is like, okay, what do we do with Capo if he's not going to perform like we want? We do have this young superstar stud goalie coming up and, and waiting in the wings. Well, now that the team's put together, uh, Jesse, like the kid in Sweden's playing over there. He's going to play over there for a couple right. years. He needs to he needs to go in the oven and just slow bake <laughs> at like 300 degrees. Just let him, <laughs> let him do like his that. thing. Let him play with Ben over there, um, play pro games, uh, work on his game. Um, but I, but I do know this, I do know you, it, it's really, really hard I mean, to make the playoffs is such an accomplishment in the national hockey league, especially with the parody to, to make the playoffs. You can't have, you cannot have below average backup goaltending to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You can't, you play 82 games in a season. You can't have your backup save percentage at 87%, 88% and expect to make the playoffs. It's just, <laughs> it, it doesn't happen. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I could probably do some due diligence and dig around and, and, and uh, you know, back that up with, with, with numbers. But um, so I, I know Billy's going to be watching it closely and, uh, you know, Hammond's down in the, uh, in the minors too, right? You know, he's, he's a guy that's played some NHL games too um, down there. So, I mean, do not be surprised at all if he gets called up, like if the four, first four or five games, uh, you know, he struggles a little bit to, to, to find his game. I, I don't think, you know, Billy's, you know, Billy's not going to overreact either too. So I mean, he's going to give him 10 games and see how he plays. But, uh, you know, at some point, if he really struggles the beginning of the, of the, of the season, you know, Billy's going to have to, you know, look around and see what else is out there. You just don't want to throw away a season because your backup goalie is just can't find his game. So mm-hmm. um, I think he's going to be fine. I really do. I, 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 I see the talent. Um, I think he's just got to get mentally right. Um but, uh, but I, I agree with you, Jesse, it's, it is a cause for concern. I know you're more concerned about Cantel, but mm-hmm. I am not. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the reasons I am not Jesse, I think just simply because 
Um, I've, I, I know about his backgrounds. I know he was kind of a lazy backup <laughs> coming into the league. And, you know, he, he, he was a backup to, uh, uh, to, to the, uh, Hendrick Lundquist out in, out in, uh, New York. So he got a chance as a young kid to really see how hard a pro works, uh, like a, a guy that's been around what a pro takes. And I remember Cam talking about, you know, I didn't know, I didn't understand this, what it, what it took now at his age, the last three or four years, he's, he's, he's taking care of his diet. He's sleeping a lot more. He's taking care of himself and it's showing the Tom Brady the regimen. Right? <laughs> yes, he is. And, mm-hmm. and Jesse, and now if, if he wasn't doing those things and you know, I, he hung out in Napa and he was a wine drinker and hanging out with his wife and his friends during the summer and have a party and have fun. Then I would be concerned. I really right. would. But I'm, but I'm watching athletes now at 33, 34, 35, 36 years old, being able to do what they do. Um, now, does that mean Jesse, is it okay if he plays 65 games? It's not, we still gotta, we gotta make sure mm-hmm. he's playing 55 to 65 games. Um, but I don't have quite the concern that you do, Jesse, about Camp Talbot. I'm more with Alexis just to see what we have there with, uh, um, with Capo. You guys are wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hate her. No, I'm just, yeah. Be. Um, you, never know. <laughs> you know, Wes, I want to ask you at the beginning of, of our interview, you said that we're returning to, to more normal fans are coming back. We're coming back to the building. All this is, is going back to what we knew before the pandemic, at least in certain ways. And, um, one of those things that is changing that changed during the pandemic was we're now going away from the series format in the season to a normal NHL 82 game schedule. Um, I personally really liked the series formatting. I thought it brought some kind of like playoff, like energy to the regular season, uh, which was cool, but not being able to play every single team, uh, was frustrating at, at certain points in the season. Um, what are your thoughts on for, especially some of these young guys who that's all they knew, uh, in their first season, in the NHL now having to play against a wider variety of teams more consistently and returning to the normal, uh, divisional, uh, formatting. Um, what are your thoughts on that for this season? Well, putting my former player hat on, <laughs> like I was just thinking to myself, if, if, you know, we had a 56 game schedule and we had to play every team eight times, like there would come a point during the season, especially halfway through the season where you're like, I do not want to see that team. Anymore. <laughs> I'm so sick of them. And I'm sure they're sick of me yeah. too. So um, I think from the player standpoint, I think it, it'll bring uh, uh, more variety playing different teams. Um there'll be more video because, you know, after yeah. you've played teams four or five times, I'm sure the coaches are like, I mean, we, we know this team inside out. Yeah. We, know go with it. we know all their tendencies on the power play. We know their tendencies off of face-offs. So I do think uh, for the players, there's going to be a lot more detail in, in meetings that they're mm-hmm. going to have to pay attention to. So that, that as a player, that would heighten my awareness right there just because, okay, we're playing New Jersey tonight. We haven't, I haven't <laughs> seen them in two years. Like what are they, who's on their power play? What do they like to do? So as a penalty killer, I want to be dialed in. So I think you're going to get more um, focus from the guys in the meetings. But um, uh, I think the fans want to see different teams. Yeah. I, I know yeah. I know, as a broadcaster <laughs> in these games and being in the building, I, I want to see different teams come in. I can't wait to see the Eastern teams come mm-hmm. in, Ovechkin and Crosby and, and, and all these guys that we don't get a chance to see, you know, every, every year, Austin Matthews, those type of players. So um Last year was a, was a, was a long year. I, I mean, I, I just, uh, I, and I didn't get a chance to, I wasn't around the players, great guys, but I just, if I had a chance to ask them, I, I'm pretty sure if I asked 10 of them, eight of them would say, <laughs> uncle, we're ready to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and not to mention th- some of those road trips. I mean, we talk so much about the team culture and how last year it seemed that things had started to shift in this year. It's, it's really shifted into a very good place. I think for the Minnesota Wild. I think Bill Guerin is doing his due diligence to make that locker room close, but obviously with the pandemic, it was so hard to create a team, right? Because you weren't able to spend the time together. I mean, just those road trips alone and being able to bond is so important and valuable mm-hmm. to success. Right. Wes? It is. I mean, that, that when you're out on the road, I mean, that's, that's your time. Uh, we all love our families and, and being around our kids, but it is nice to get away for, for you know, four is or it? five days. Yeah, I is. say as I bounce a baby on my lap. And I know that's we'll because that. I'm home all the time now. Right? Yeah. I'm looking for a four-day road trip. <laughs> time to time. Um, but you, you're right, Jesse, being on the road last year uh, and what the guys had to go through, like they couldn't leave their hotel rooms, right? They had to order room service in all the time and uh, we just sit in their rooms and watch Netflix and movies and stuff like, I mean, that, that's hard. That, mm-hmm. that really is hard. And that is where you build, um, 
your team camaraderie getting to, to, to know guys like it are, is the dinners before uh, <laughs> night before games like yeah you know and and you know goofing around with guys and, and from what I understand like the the wild team like when they do team dinners it's not it's not the four uh Czechs and Russians going off for dinner <laughs> here and the Finns and Swedes going over like it's everybody together and that's how you 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 build team camaraderie and, and joking around each other playing jokes on each other and, and learning about uh uh, you know, the person that you play with, you know, you might get into a conversation where someone else has a family and, and they're going through some things in their house and, it, and all of a sudden, you know, as a father, you're trying to help the guy out. And, and, <laughs> yeah. You know, have you ever thought about this little goofy things? And this, this, these are the type of things that happen on the road. You have conversations and you, you, you build a, uh, you know, a tighter relationship with the guys you're in the locker room with. And, and that helps when you're going into a third period and your coach is <laughs> tearing a strip of paint off the, off the wall and you calling out <laughs> all the players, you look around the room and um, you care about each other. Right. So I, I do think it's really, really important. And, uh, and because of it, I think we're going to see a better uh, quality, a better product on the ice even for our fans, because our, our players are going to be able to spend more time um, in normal circumstances out on the road. Right. And a large part of that team camaraderie falls on the captains, obviously, Everybody should be a leader in the room. It doesn't matter if you have a letter, but they recently added Marcus Foligno and Matt Dumba with those um, alternates. How great of a selection is that? I mean, how much do those guys truly mean to this team, not just on the ice, but off? Well, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody. <laughs> right. I mean, Marcus didn't have a letter on his jersey, but everybody knew in the room, like he was, he's kind of the vocal leader in the locker room. So that was not much of a surprise at all. Um, you know, Matt Dumba getting, getting an A, I mean, that for me, that, I mean, for the, just think about, think about Billy Guerin giving the C to, to Jared Spurgeon and, and how much he thought about that and, and, and pondered it, what he was going to do. Billy Guerin, like we've said a million times has won four Stanley cups. He knows how important leadership is in a locker room. This is not, mm-hmm. this is not something that, oh, great. This guy's got the C and the, the team picture and he gets to wear it and, and look at it for the rest of his life. Being a captain, a leader in a locker room, a sports locker room, especially hockey, especially mm-hmm. hockey, it is very, very important. And them giving an A to Matt Dumba tells you tells you exactly what the, the leadership group or what the the management think of of Matt Dumba. And you know, there were there were times during the season last year, and this is the first time that I saw this with Matt Dumba here over the last probably three years, that with a minute left in the game and the Wild are up by a goal. After timeouts, everybody's fresh, okay? Everybody's fresh. Matt Dumba and Jonas Brodine would jump on the ice and, and take the last 45 seconds, at, and the other team would have their best players on the ice. We would always see Jared Spurgeon and Ryan Suter. But last year was the first year that it was hit and miss. It, 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 you know, if, if Matt and, and Jonas were having a good game that night, it wasn't just automatically Jared Spurgeon <laughs> and, and mm-hmm. Suter going on the ice the last minute. So that tells you that the coaching staff has – have to has trust in Matt in playing a 200 foot game and he can play a strong 200 foot game if he really puts his mind to it. And he was a plus player, Matt last, last year for the first time in two or three years. And um, I just think his game is really, really matured. He's, he's understanding more about the type of player he is and um, he's become more of a 200 foot player. So they all bring something different to the table, right? Like, so Jared Spurgeon is just kind of that quiet leader. You know, I, I happen to be in the Detroit Red Wings locker room for about a half a year, and I, I got a chance to watch Steve Eiserman go about his business. Quiet leader, never said much. Yeah. But when he closed the door, <laughs> he talked, you knew something was coming. Okay. Marcus Felino is going to be loud and vocal in the locker room. He's going to be that guy. Okay. And, that, and then now all of a sudden you've got Matt Dumba on the ice, who's more <laughs> of an emotional guy out in the ice with a big hit. My you know, hype man. Around, I love it. <laughs> doing something like this after a goal. Or, you know, like, like they got their own inside stories going in the locker room. You never know what they're doing. But so they're, yeah. they're, there are three leaders. They're all different types of leaders. And uh, the locker room has been changed up a little bit, obviously, with some of the older players moving on. And all the young players are going to have a voice in the locker room, which is the way it always sh- should be. It wasn't always like that, but that's mm-hmm. the way uh, great teams operate. And that, that's the way our locker room is going to be. And, I, and I, I like what I hear and I like what I see. Couldn't be more excited for. I mean, Wes, you should know we have an official Marcus Foligno fan club shirt through SodaStick.com. If you would like to purchase, I did know that. I was aware of this. Yeah, Alexis is the president, so we'll uh, we'll hook you up with one of those. They are available now, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I'll send you my address. Yeah, exactly. Um, The 
insider question. What's my, what's Miko Koivu doing with the Minnesota wild? Do you know, speaking of older players moving on, you see him roaming around, he's doing yeah. something with the front office. What is it? I don't know. Scoop West scoop. No, Come on see, here. see, you I'm going to tell, <laughs> tell you girls the exact same thing. I tell the butcher at Kowalski's or Jerry's when I go get food, <laughs> they think that I know what's going on. I have no, I don't know any more than them. You know, I'm not in the meetings with the hockey ops guys. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I just, I really don't know. And, um, I do know, I mean, we've all seen Miko's been sitting up mm-hmm. in the perch above the, uh, you know, with the, with the hockey ops people over there. And uh, I, it, it sounds like from what has been reported that um, he's going to be part of the uh, player development. I don't know if that's going to be with the, the, the kids maybe down in Iowa or whatever, but um, you know, having a guy like me go around a guy that's been around a long, long time, um, the way he went about his business, you know, having Mike Medano in the mix too. I mean, there's just, there's good, Good, play, good players and good people around. You can't have enough of, of those type of players around. But uh, so we'll see how that uh, role really evolves with Miko. I, to be honest, I don't, I really don't know what uh, his role is going to be. Likely story, Wes. <laughs> One day we'll get it out of you. Well, before we let you never, go. Hey, I would never lie to you. <laughs> Perfect. Write that I down. Like it. <laughs> Write it down. Before we let you go, final predictions. How do you think the central shakes out? Who gets first position, who finishes last, and where's the middle fall? Um, I, I, Colorado is obviously the, 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 the cream of the crop. They're, they're right at the top. Arizona is going to be at the bottom. There's going to be the other six teams, uh, five teams fighting for those other four spots. Um, if the wild get, if the wild get nine fifteen save percentage again this mm-hmm. year from Cam Talbot, they'll finish second. Uh, and, nice. um, I really do believe that. Um, I, I don't like Winnipeg as much as other people do. Um, I know Chicago got blasted in Colorado without Nathan McKinnon and the world we live in, everyone's taking a snapshot everywhere. I'm not one of those guys. I think Chicago's, uh, done some amazing things during the summer. Getting Tyler Johnson is an underrated player. I think uh, he's going to be outstanding for them. So I think Chicago's going to be there. I think Chicago, Dallas, Winnipeg, the wild and Colorado, are going to make the playoffs in the, uh, I do think, I think Dallas is just so good defensively. Um, that I think that they're going to, they're going to have trouble scoring goals, but I think they're so good defensively. They're going to climb it. They're going to figure out a way to get in there, but it's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be an absolute dog fight. And I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if Chicago didn't make it, I'd be obviously surprised if the wild didn't make it, but uh, you know, if you get an injury or two girls with a parity in the league, it's just, it's really difficult to overcome not having your stars in the lineup for 15, 20 games. So it's going to be exciting for our fans. They're going to be in the building. They're going to get a chance to watch Kirill Kaprizov live uh, in person. And Kevin Fiala, two superstars. We've never gone, girls, we've never gone into a season with two bullets in the chamber like this. We just, we have, we've had, yeah. you know, last year we went into the season with those two players. We didn't know what we had with Kirill Kaprizov. Now we do. And uh, Kevin Fiala on a one-year deal too. Don't sleep on that guy, man. He's got a lot of drive in him. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he has himself a huge year too. So very exciting um, to have fans back in the building. And uh, it's going to be an amazing year. We're certainly excited to get the season going. We get to watch you on Bali Sports North. So mm-hmm. that's going to be great. We'll be able to see you up in the press box again. Yeah. Wes, thanks so much for uh, for joining us. And, Uh-oh, uh, it's time. Avery it's signing time. off too. You're so close, Avery. <laughs> just wants to say goodbye. Uh, no, but thank you so much. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. This is producer Fred. I just want to make sure everybody was up to date on every single thing that's going on with Bar Down Beauties for season three. We've got shirts coming out. We've got some sweepstakes. We've got some announcements. Like, follow, share. You'll be right on top of all the news. Thanks to Walsey for joining us. Love having a guy like that in our corner. Can't go wrong there. My mom still is very jealous. She's like, talk about these people like we're friends and like we are friends mom. <laughs> we are this isn't just made up in my head like yeah Wes buds. Walls is my mom's favorite uh former wild player so I'm, I'm sure she'll be excited to see that as well but yeah I love I love the analytical side of the game that we don't always get a chance with our specific you know careers to be able to do so talking to people you mean like the Shane... non-NHL playing component that we right don't yeah yeah right. No, um, right so like people like but... Shana Goldman and Wes Walls <laughs> having those people on to really break down the game is is really fun and especially heading into a new season here so yeah shout out Walls you're the best can't wait to watch you on tv this year yes exactly all right segment three up for debate which is i'm gonna just call it our most popular twitter engagement thing right like i think people love it and i love it because 
Alexis loves to stir up the chaos. Mm-hmm. So she takes charge mm-hmm. of that. You came up with this week's up for debate. I don't think this was a 3 a.m. Jesse. It was one, not right? a 3 a.m. Okay. Jesse thought. No, okay. this yep. was an original was good. Monday afternoon. Alexis <laughs> thought um, just normal timing, <laughs> just normal time. Um, yeah. So this week uh, we asked you guys how you thought the wild were going to finish this season uh, for sure. Not making the playoffs, a bubble team or for sure making the playoffs. Um, it seemed like most people were in the category of the wild for sure. Making the playoffs, a handful of people thinking they'd be a bubble team. I didn't see anybody saying they weren't going to make the playoffs, which just could be Minnesota. Just optimism Minnesota. Speaking. Can't trust you guys. Um, no. But yeah, Jesse, I'll let you answer it first. Uh, since you normally give me the floor, where do you think the wild finish this season? I think they're going to be a bubble team again. I mean, I, I do have slightly more confidence, but being back in the central, we know what the central does, <laughs> yeah. right? It's so up and down. And as we talked about with Wes, and as we talk about in our breakdowns and everything, you know, who your top team is, you know, who your bottom team is, and it's so jumbled in the middle for mm-hmm. me. Um, I'm, I lean a little bit more toward them probably making the playoffs rather than missing, but I still see them as a bubble team because again, you don't know what Chicago is going to do. You don't know yeah. what St. Louis is going to do or Winnipeg. Um, I'm pretty high on Dallas if they stay healthy and mm-hmm. goaltending is a huge, huge question mark there in Dallas. So, I mean, it's just kind of everything in there in the middle makes me think that it'll be a bubble team. It'll come down to those last few points, but that's where we thrive, right? I was like, gonna say, that's, that's where what Minnesota always thrive. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go bubble team. What did you think, Alexis? Um, well, yeah, first of all, the return to the division really changes the scope of like how we break down this, this season, um, and playing some teams that we didn't see as much last year and whatnot. And we know that historically, since they rearranged the divisions, which bring back the old, bring back the Northwest division, my first (laughs) petition of the season, (laughs) I forgot about that bit, bring back the Northwest division, Um, (laughs) but, uh, when they rearranged the divisions, which has been years now, um, the central division has been very competitive. I would argue it's one of the toughest uh, divisions to play in, in the NHL. Um, every season, it feels like kind of a toss up for anybody to really a win the division and make the playoffs. So that makes it hard when you look at this, because you, we know the wild are not the best team in that division and we know they're not the, not the worst. So they fall somewhere in the middle. Um, but What I will say is, and check out our preview because I'm going to drop this hot take in the preview. Um, So hopefully you watch that. If you haven't, go check it out now. I say the wild for sure make the playoffs. um, And I'll dive more into that in in, uh, the preview that we did. So check that out. Um, But yeah, I think the wild um, are going to be a good team this season. And they're normally that bubble team. They're normally mediocre and they get made fun of for being mediocre and they get made fun of for being like, Oh, here, the wild are average again. And I really think that they are going to take a step up this season. You've secured some long-term contracts on this team. Um, you finally have some very exciting pieces on this Minnesota wild team who you, who, you know, can produce. Um, and if some of those question marks that have people concerned, uh, get sorted out early in the season and we know what we're dealing with, um, I think they're going to be able to put together a good season. So I am confident the Minnesota wild are not a bubble team and that they uh very strongly make the playoffs this year there you go there you have it how about that for some tea there you go (laughs) tea tea (laughs) we didn't forget we'll have to we'll do like a word of the episode every week maybe and you could just educate me and this one is tea fred can you put a little graphic tea in the corner just like our capri soft watch watch. (laughs) more work for fred should have showed up to the recording uh (laughs) that's gonna do it for this week's episode i'm sure fred will be back next week if not We'll see, we'll but, again. uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Thanks as always to our presenting sponsor, Soda Sick. Don't forget to go grab that Marcus Felino fan club shirt. Yeah, baby. It's mm-hmm. here. Uh, a portion of those proceeds go to the Janice Felino foundation, which is really cool. You can also snag 15% off with code bar down beauty. So be sure to use that. Also grab a free $10 over at better edge. That's B E T T O R edge.com with code buttes B E A U T S. Listen to the pod on that app, uh, social, keep an eye out for beat the butte competition coming up within that and go bet on some wild games. Why not win a little bit of money? Um, Jim beam cheers to you. Cheers to me. I'm going now that it's fall and winter I'm gonna get Jim beam really back in the mix, right? Mm-hmm. Like a little, little beam for a wild game, maybe a nine o'clock puck drop. It sounds about right. Yeah, You got to be drinking for those day at nine <laughs> and nine 30 start times. <laughs> it's just a little silly. And then always shout out to talk North as well for featuring us on their lovely network. We're continuing to work on some cool, maybe live shows. I know you guys mm-hmm. love the Russo LaPanta live show. How about the Buttes live show? Let yeah. us know where we should go. If you have any <laughs> ideas. Um, and while you're at it, subscribe, rate, share. We love you all. We have surpassed 3000 fans on Twitter. So that's really, really exciting. Cause that's all organic growth. We didn't buy any bots. So mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. 
Um, so you guys are the best, truly, truly the best. We're excited for the hockey season. Giddy up, let's go. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Have a good one.